What's up, Sushi Squad? We back in for some more Trove to the Trove. I got my trumpet a little bit ready beforehand. It It's weird. The trumpet's always broken every time I'm streaming, but when I'm recording videos, it seems to be fine. How y'all doing? Hope you're doing fantastic, wonderful. Hope this video makes your day even better because today we're going to be talking about Binding Darkness. The bane of our existence. So first and foremost, what is Binding Darkness? Binding Darkness is a required resource in order to craft gem re-rollers. Uh, so in the gems tab of the adventure crafting table, you can craft contained chaos spark, and this is going to cost you Binding Darkness. Two of these can end up making a chaos flare, which both of those have completely different uh, uses. Uh, basically, when you end up taking the gems, the uh, chaos spark is going to end up re-rolling the stat in a specific location. Cosmic gems are different, however, because you cannot actually re-roll the light stat value. You can only re-roll the other stat values. And that's where that other, the, the flare item comes into place. Because what the flare item is going to do is going to end up moving uh, the pearls. You can see on the light stat right here. It's going to move the pearls to a random location from one stat to another. So you basically will end up using one of these bad boys. Let's say we had two pearls on physical damage. We would have to use multiple other... Of these on a cosmic gem anyways in order to end up getting all the pearls over onto light now it's not recommended that you're going to end up using the uh, flares on any other gem other than the cosmic gems because the cosmic gems again are the only ones that have the one stat value the light stat value that cannot be re-rolled for all of your other gems you can just use the contained uh, chaos spark to end up just re-rolling until you end up having the right stats in the right placement now, before we get started with the actual video of where you're going to end up finding these bad boys, because we do have one main method of finding them, uh, and then another kind of trickier method that did end up working, but it doesn't now. Uh, most of all, it's just something that I wanted to mention just because I thought it was a really cool trick. Uh, but before we get started with that, I gotta let you guys know, I gotta plug it. Uh, if you guys are new to Trove, please use that sign up link down in the description. Anything you end up buying out of the cash shop after you've signed up with that link, I'll end up making a percentage of it. It's an awesome way you can support me by literally just playing the game and buying things that you would buy otherwise. It's not like it increases the price of anything. And I want to give a huge shout out to GameAgo for giving me the opportunity. And thank you to all of you that have actually done that because it has made a huge, huge impact on my life when YouTube's not paying as much uh usually usually the game ago money ends up uh compensating for that so i can end up paying the bills so i just wanted to share my appreciation uh to those of you that have done that so uh, back in the day, Shadow Towers, that was the big thing. That was where you would end up getting Binding Darkness. Of course, where has everything in the Shadow Towers gone? It has migrated over into the Delves. Now, there's multiple ways that you can access the Delves. Uh, we have to talk about the Delves, guys. I know that it's confusing for a lot of people just because the way that they're implemented is kind of weird. But essentially, there's going to end up being three different types of Delve portals. There's going to be the public portals right here where you will press E and then you can see this green thing on top of me. Uh, that is us queuing up in the portal. But if we go adventuring and stuff like that, you'll actually see this little icon in the top left. That implies that you are still queued and waiting to get into a public portal. So you can literally queue up and then go adventure and do a bunch of our stuff which i personally wouldn't recommend because then you could end up getting pulled away from a piece of loot or something like that just because you'll get slammed into the delves uh either that or while you're adventuring you could always just copy the world id and then you could just warp back out if there was a big significant piece of gear or something thanks for the pinatas even though they're uggles ones um but here's the thing for binding darkness it doesn't really matter what delves portal you take uh if you go to the crafting portal over here or crafting table you can make a private delve portal uh and then there's also a challenge delve portal an easy one and just a normal challenge delve portal now I'll, I'll try to explain this as best as i can as quickly as i can because of course this is a binding darkness tutorial uh but for the public portal you are pretty much as it says right there your class is locked invites are for returning players only so you can only invite people that were invited or in the delves in the first place uh, and the difficulty is going to change based on the queue of players i didn't know they had that tooltip. that's very nice 
and uh with private delve portals uh, essentially it's going to end up being the same except you can swap your classes you can invite anybody uh you know that's the di big difference of the private delve portals and the challenge delve portals are essentially the uh, kind of like the new weekly the, the new shadow tower so you're going to be going through the challenge delve portals just to get like your weekly junk out of the way uh based on the difficulty that you end up getting to the deeper you go you get a purple name blah blah, blah. it doesn't really matter because ultimately the biggest thing about the delves and why we're talking about them in the first place is because binding darkness is actually dropped by delve enemies okay so that's why i'm not gonna go into too much detail about all the delve stuff if you find any a bit confusing it's not as confusing as it seems and i already have other tutorials on it so i'm sorry i ended up rambling about that but i felt that it was essential to just mention a couple brief things about the different portals and stuff like that because uh in order to optimize your farming of the binding darkness you might want to just go for a private portal uh, that's what I would recommend if you can manage to get a public portal going okay awesome but you might have to swap to a weaker class just so that you can end up pulling that off I, it depends uh, but again you just end up fighting enemies over and over and they're going to end up uh, eventually dropping the binding darkness binding darkness is going to be in your gem tab of your flux category uh, right over here so I don't really have that much 233 is terrible but that's just because binding darkness is one of the crappiest resources to farm in the game because of how essential it is it, like it's like because it's so essential it makes it so obvious and so apparent that it's very very difficult to farm because it is not a common resource it's really really ridiculously rare but here's the thing the enemies in the delves, there is so freaking many of them, especially after one of the more recent hot fixes. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that hot fix is only on PC right now. Uh, it might have already rolled out for console, but I remember that when they posted the patch notes, it was on PC. Uh, but essentially, they ended up making it so that there was more delve enemies per floor. And that seems to have only taken effect like within the last week on PC. So let me know console players have you guys ended up getting that update because essentially what would happen in the delves uh is when you get to the deeper floors it would be like kill kill all the enemies in a room and there'd be like one enemy or something now there's actually like 10 or 20 or kill 140 enemies on the entire floor and stuff like that so obviously binding darkness is a lot easier to get however almost open my friends list there and that usually crashes my game if i wait too long so another quick tip is that you actually can find binding darkness from gem booster boxes of course it's going to end up being very very expensive on your cubits because you can only buy these one at a time for 500 cubits each now cubits are essentially going to end up being the thing that you're grinding every single day that's pretty much what i grind and trove is just getting your daily done uh but gem booster boxes can end up having a plethora of other good items but essentially you can use them for getting binding darkness but i wouldn't recommend it unless you have nothing else to spend your cubits on there is a trick that you guys can end up doing it's going to be very very specific and very difficult to pull off just because you're going to have to find a club world that actually has this portal uh, because the other way that you can get binding darkness is by just going into normal adventure worlds and stuff like that uh, uh, Elite enemies or mini boss enemies uh, You've seen them out in the world. They're like bigger gargantuan versions of normal enemies They usually drop like a bunch of gear and stuff like that. Those guys have a chance of dropping binding darkness as well Now I want to stress this if this update is on consoles and you guys are seeing hundreds of enemies in the delves then this tactic is pretty much moot but i did want to talk about it just because i think it's cool and i'm not exactly sure where console stands as far as the updates are concerned uh, i want to give a shout out to my buddy spooky pants because he's the one who let me know about this he's not necessarily the one who discovered it uh but i don't know who discovered it so anyways there's going to be these event portals the mysterious portal these are portals from an event that was like a year or two ago, so you're going to have to find a club world that specifically has them. I don't know which clubs those are. That's that's going to be the tricky part, but maybe club worlds could start advertising it, at least until the update uh, ends up coming out that gives you guys more enemies. Now, it doesn't matter. Uh, it shouldn't matter whether you're in U1 or U9, just because I'm pretty sure uh, it's just world bosses in general that will end up dropping Binding Darkness, starting from U1, uh, I think. Which one's U1? Oh, God, it's Faye already? Jeez, I thought it was like Candyland. But anyways... 
the reason why it's so important to end up hopping in these portals uh, again i don't think that there's a difference uh between u9 and u1 as far as the drop rates are concerned because honestly speaking when i went into either of these it was astronomically bad i i grinded these for like 15 minutes and i didn't get a single binding darkness but you know what that's normal that's normal for binding darkness but the cool thing is that this world and this is why it was such a neat little tip that uh you know my buddy let me know about is that this world actually has the most elites or mini bosses essentially of the entire game near as i can tell uh so it might not seem like there's that much but we could just be getting really unlucky here uh sometimes these enemies will end up dropping unique styles that were uh, again from the event that it originally was so I mean, I guess a little bit of free mastery, but uh, if you get lucky, like I, usually I find they're on the outskirts because the biome's pretty small. Uh, you can tell that it's just an ever dark biome kind of slightly reskinned. Uh, and obviously I'm using the orb boss finder mod, which makes things a lot easier for me. Console players, unfortunately, won't be able to do that. Uh, but essentially you're just looking for like the bigger enemies that are quite literally in the ever dark, not the little shadow guys that you can see wandering around, just the big chungus dudes. And sometimes you can get like a really nice chain. Like you can see right here, you know, that's three, uh, bosses right there four or five six uh you know and it's seven over in the distance eight over there like it just keeps going and going and going there is a lot of these bosses around so this would probably end up being the most effective way uh given if the update is on console again i'm sorry i i, I don't know now the other thing i want to briefly mention is that world bosses now drop starfire dragon egg fragments so back in the day you'd only get it from shadow tower enemies it was one of the hardest dragons to get in the game and still is one of the hardest dragons to get in the game but they've changed it uh since the delves update so that just world bosses in general like the elite enemies they can end up just dropping them across the board all of them can so this might actually be one of the best methods of farming starfire dragon egg fragments that said it's still not recommended because it is absolutely atrocious drop rates but it's just kind of a cool uh, uh you know a cool side effect of having this old event portal oh there's spooky pants as well by the way speak of the devil but yeah so you can use this as a neat little trick to end up grinding binding darkness a little bit a little bit faster than the delves uh, again, if that update is already on console, then this is completely irrelevant and it doesn't really matter, but it is still a neat little trick that something like this actually exists. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it as far as Binding Darkness is concerned. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, I would appreciate if you would smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel. Dianora and stay epic gamers.